Hi, I'm Joe Zicke, inventor of the Revolution, and one of our followers asked about launching and setting up the Rev Eagle on the beach in higher winds. Well, we don't exactly have high winds today. We're probably in that range of five to eight miles an hour, but let's go through the setup on a standard Rev and also the setup and launching for a Rev Eagle. Let's start out by setting our line sets up and attaching them to the handles. We start this process using a lark's head. Lark's head is fingers through, fold it over, pinch it. This forms this loop. Put that loop onto your line, cinch it down, slide it up against the knot. White lines go on top, black on the bottom, red on the right. Stake your handles to the ground with the top of the handle at the stake. Right on the right side, white on the left side, and let's wind out our lines. This is a good time to take your time with your line sets to avoid unnecessary tangles. When you get to the end of the line set, take off your two pairs, put the winder in your pocket, and spread your two pairs apart. Don't worry a lot about tangles at this point. It's much easier to feel once you have the tension of the tight on the lines. I have to put the red lines actually on this side because we're going to set up the rev upside down. On windy days, setting up your rev can easily get out of control, so here's four basic rules to follow to keep you in control. Unroll your rev and keep your leading edge into the wind. From here on out, keep this leading edge into the wind. Rule number two, build your revolution on the ground. The wind is less on the ground. Right now, we don't have a big problem because there's not a lot of wind, but in all other cases, it's a good idea to keep your rev on the ground. Rule number three, whenever moving your rev, keep that leading edge into the wind. So if we need to turn our rev over, see how that leading edge is kept into the wind? Don't turn it over like pulling up like this, and up like this, and it like that. The wind will take it, and you'll end up in trouble. Rule number four, keep your rev downwind. What do I mean by downwind? Well, you can see by the feathers, the wind is blowing in this direction. That is downwind and that is upwind. You want to keep your rev downwind and the leading edge facing into the wind. So this sets you between the wind and the rev. So you're right in the middle. You want to keep that rev downwind of you. If you bring it upwind, it tends to blow into you and then you can get into troubles with this kind of situation. Keep your rev downwind. Okay, we're ready to build our rev. It's always a good idea when you first get your rev, build it at home so you have a sense of how everything goes together. So then when you're at the beach, you don't really have any surprises. All right, let's assemble our leading edge. This is on the leading edge of the kite. You grab your outer shaft and slide it in. And you have a center shaft that also has a ferrule. So you have to feel those two to go together and make sure that those shafts are completely together. Then put on your end cap. Do the same on the other side. If you're not sure about the fit of those shafts, slide the whole leading edge out. Assemble it outside. This way you can make sure it's completely together and then slide it back in as one piece. Next, we're ready to assemble the down struts. What if our wing is face up? We need to assemble this on the back of the wing. How are we gonna do that? Let's follow the rules to stay in control of your rev. One, keep that leading edge into the wind. Number two, rotate it and keep it downwind. Number three, lay it back down to the ground so there's less wind. If you're on the beach, you can use the sand to help control your rev. You can put a little sand on the wing and it'll help keep it under control. Number two, if you're not on the beach, use your hand to keep that leading edge under control so it doesn't blow away. And number three, make sure you don't get your knee on that leading edge and possibly break it or crush it. Okay, we're ready to put our down struts on. Start out by putting the top of the shaft and the top cap at the leading edge. Number two, attach our reflex spring, but make sure that spring is on the inside of the wing. Number three, attach your bottom cap. Make sure the bridle's clear. Do the same on the other wing. 
All right, we're just about ready to hook our lines up to our rev. First, let's turn it over again. So pay attention to those basic rolls. Control that leading edge. Keep that leading edge into the wind, and we've got to spin it over. That leading edge into the wind, and back down the ground. We're ready to set our lines up here. As you notice, the wings are flipped because the rev is upside down. So that will come into play and attach our lines. Okay, remember what we said before? The right wing ends up being on the left side because it's upside down. So that means set up the red lines on the right side. We're going to do the same thing we did before. Lark's head that knot, pinch those fingers over. We have our loop. Attach that to the top bridle point on your rev. Cinch it down, pull it up to the top attach the bottom line to the bottom bridle point. Do the same thing on the other side. All right, we're ready to set up our rev for our first launch. Again, keep control of that leading edge. We need to turn it over, roll it over, keeping that leading edge into the wind and staying in control. Remember our handles are stakes, so we're gonna put some tension on our handles now and tighten it back. Make sure everything is clear. What we're going to do now is we're going to tilt this wing underneath. This keeps the wing down. If you don't, you leave it like this. If you get a little gust of wind and lift it off and self-launch it, you'll be out of control. So tilt those wings under. Make sure all your bridles are clear. And let's go back and launch your rev. If you're launching in high winds over 10 miles an hour, you can move this leader line out to the end knot. This will slow down your rev and help you keep it under control. But in lighter winds like we have today, I'm going to keep my knot and leader lines inside. All right, now the steps for a successful launch. Pick your handles up off the ground. Keep forward thumb pressure to keep your rev from self-launching. Step back, make sure all four lines are clear and all four lines are tight. As you take a step back, launch your thumbs back over your shoulders. This will cause your rev to fly up. The minute your rev leaves the ground, the second your rev leaves the ground, push those thumbs forward, stop it, and back it back down. It looks like this. Thumbs back, step back, launch, stop, back it back down. That was a perfect first launch. Excellent. Thumbs back, launch, stop, and back it down. What you should be focusing on is total control and rotation of those handles. Practice that several times and get a feel for how sensitive the rev is. Now, we take it to the next step. Let's pop it up and find the hover. Lines tight, thumbs back, pop it up, find that balance point. It's not going up, it's not going down, find that perfect hover. Back and down, under total control. That's perfect. Launching and crashing and launching and crashing builds a weak foundation. Stick to the basics, build a strong foundation, and take it up from there. All right, let's set up our Rev Eagle. All right, let's roll out your Eagle. And notice, your body is attached to the wing. It's always a good idea to open up your Rev at home first time and set it up. This helps to avoid any surprises out in the field. I'm gonna put my eagle head in my pocket for safekeeping. Take the shafts out of the wing and open your wing up. Leading edge into the wind. Let's do a quick check to make sure that our bridle's clear. Just like our double X, let's assemble the leading edge first. Grab that leading edge shaft slide it in. Remember, we're going to connect that ferrule toward the wing. And of course, make sure it's completely in. Once again, if you're not sure, slide that whole leading edge out, pre-assemble it, and slide it back in. Clear your lines. Pop your end cap on. Make sure there's no bridle tangle. Do the same on the other side. All right, we've got two options here. We can just flip our wing over and start to build it as we did on the double X, or we can attach the body and kind of get it out of the way and then flip the wing. Let's do it that way. So let's attach the body at the top. We've got a Velcro attachment. It goes on the inside tab. The other Velcro attachment goes on the other inside tab. 
This is on the front of the wing. Now let's rotate the wing over again. Control that leading edge into the wind. Roll it over. Bring it down to the ground where there's less wind. All right, we've got five down struts, four wing struts, and one body strut. The body strut's longer, so let's put that one off to the side. We need one spring and one non-sprung. Let's put the spring reflex in the middle. Put on the top cap. Before you put on the cap, make sure you go through this top reinforcing loop right here. And then put the cap on. Now attach your spring, and again, the spring needs to be toward the inside of the wing. And then finally, put the end cap on the bottom of the wing. Make sure that bridle's clear. Out to the outside of the wing, strut on the top cap, attach the bottom cap, make sure your bridle's clear. Do the same on the other wing. Okay, let's attach our body. Make sure that, well notice that there's only one tip of the tail attached. Take the other tip and slip it over the knot. That's all there is to it. No lark's head or anything. Take your down strut, slide it through the loop, the spring, into the cap. Make sure that cap is up against it. Pull the tail, put that bottom cap on, make sure the bridle is clear. All right, we're ready to put the head on, but first we've got to flip our body over, so let's use our standard technique. Control that leading edge, keep it into the wind, rotate it. While you keep that leading edge into the wind, bring it back down to the beach where there's less wind. All right, put your head on, put that spring all the way up and make sure it goes up into the beak and then attach the front Velcro. You can fly with or without the head, so if you're crashing a lot, leave the head off until you get the hang of it, and then put the head on. Okay, let's set up our line sets. Once again, our Lark's head. Notice we have the white red line, which goes on the top of the right wing, and notice we're on the left side because the wing is upside down. Put it down, attach it to knot, connect the bottom knot, to the bottom bridle, do the same to the other side. Just as we did with the double X, we're getting ready for the launch, so we're going to control that leading edge. Lift it up, we have the tension of the lines, the hold in place, rotate it over, keeping that leading edge into the wind. Use the line tension to set it back, and again, we can tilt the wingtips under. Self launching. The final attachment for the head two Velcro tabs back here. They go to the outside tabs. Pull a little tension there, pull a little tension there, and your eagle is ready to fly. Tilt those wings under. As usual, these seagulls are going crazy when I bring the eagle out, so let's have some fun. Alright, just as we did before, our goal is a successful launch and landing. So again, we're just going to pop it up stop it and bring it back down and try to get a feel for how sensitive it is. The Eagle is very sensitive, so don't hurry through this section. Fly it up, land it, fly it up, hover it, and land it. Here we go. Line's clear, line's tight, thumbs back over my shoulder, a quick hop, up, stop, back down. Again, up, stop, back down. Again, this time with the hover. Up, stop, hover, up, stop, cover, control. A perfect landing. That's excellent. All right, join us at Rev Club 38. It's included free with your purchase and will take your skills to the next level. Visit our website at revkites.com. Hit the like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll see you on the floor.